I'm Michelle Kittleson, professor of medicine at the Cedar sinai Smith Heart Institute and associate editor for Jack, here to talk about time to significant benefit for finerenone in patients with heart failure with first author, Dr. Muthu Paduganathan. This is being presented at the Heart Failure Society of America meeting with simultaneous publication at Jack. So Dr. Vuduganathan is a superstar cardiologist at Brigham and Women's Hospital and instructor of medicine at Harvard Medical School. His clinical interests focus on the intersection between diabetes, obesity, and heart disease. He's authored over 250 peer review publications on these topics. I can't imagine a better person to dive in. So first question to you, Muthu. The fine arts trial demonstrated that in patients with heart failure and mildly reduced or preserved ejection fraction, finerenone resulted in a significantly lower rate of a composite of total worsening heart failure events and death from cardiovascular causes than placebo. In the current analysis, you evaluated the timing of first statistical significance of finerenone in reducing clinical events. Can you explain why this research question is relevant to clinicians who care for patients with heart failure? Thanks so much, Michelle. Clinicians and patients often wonder how soon a therapy might actually be operative, might take action. And mechanistically, we know that as soon as therapies like finerenone are ingested, it does in fact alter core biological pathways the, based on the pharmacokinetics and pharmacological properties of the therapy. But clinicians may wonder how soon might it actually avert clinical events like worsening heart failure events and so this analysis was undertaken to estimate that timing and to offer clinicians a potential time timeline for which a therapy like finerenone might benefit patients in averting important clinical events. Perfect. And in this pre-specified analysis of fine arts heart failure, first statistical significance for the primary endpoint was observed within one month of therapeutic initiation, a benefit that was sustained until final follow-up. However, a key limitation of this analysis is the assumption that first statistical significance is commensurate with first clinical benefits, as statistical significance influenced not only by the magnitude of the treatment effect, but also the size of the population studies, number of clinical events accrued. So in light of this limitation, how should clinicians apply these results to their patients? So in a trial like Fine Arts, in which it's an event-driven trial focused on discrete clinical events like worsening heart failure events, it might be actually challenging to figure out exactly when a therapy starts working. And so we assumed that the first statistical significance that was achieved in the trial was in fact comparable to the first clinical actions of the drug. However, we know that the based on the event separation curves, that it actually occurs much sooner, that almost immediately we see uh, curve separation. And so perhaps this is in fact a conservative estimate and that if we had a very, very large trial uh, we could even see significance reached at an even earlier time point in the course of the trial. Amazing. So really what we should take home as clinicians is mineralocorticoid antagonists good for patients with heart failure seemingly now across the spectrum of ejection fraction. Now we know there are other MRAs with strong class one recommendations for the use in heart failure with reduced ejection fraction, spironolactone and aplerinone. We know that the TopCat trial with spironolactone 10 years ago was not a positive trial for the primary endpoint there, there was regional variation, which suggests that fine arts might be vindication for the mineralocorticoid antagonist in patients with heart failure and ejection fraction 40% or higher. So my last question for you is, do you think there's something special about finerenone, or can the current analysis be extrapolated to these steroidal MRAs as well? Should physicians specifically prescribe finerenone or the potentially cheaper generic spironolactone and aplerinone for their patients with heart failure with mildly reduced or preserved ejection fraction? That's the critical question, Michelle. And ultimately, 
um, in terms of this axis, um, I agree that this actually does underscore that mineralocorticoid receptor antagonism is important across the ejection fraction spectrum after fine arts heart failure. And while we've often thought about MRAs as influencing long-term disease progression through pathways like fibrosis and hypertrophy that might occur over a very long time frame, these analyses help bolster the notion that MRAs, in fact, act fairly rapidly on perhaps pathways that occur earlier in the time course of illness, like naturesis and anti-inflammatory effects and hemodynamic effects that occur on a shorter timeline. In terms of differentiating non-steroidal and steroidal MRAs, Unfortunately, we don't have large-scale outcomes trials that have head-to-head -head comparisons. We have earlier trial comparisons of phase two programs, in, in, including the ARTS trial, that did show that perhaps there was a safety advantage of finerenone. Ultimately, when applying any clinical trial evidence, we do lean on evidence-based practice. And I think that fine arts heart failure is the first really um, definitive evidence we have of an MRA, any MRA, showing benefit in heart uh, heart disease, specifically heart failure, uh, with mildly reduced and preserved ejection fraction. So my, my choice would be to lean on the evidence-based option. And in circumstances in which we do have financial or economic constraints, I think these alternatives as clinicians, ultimately, we do reach for practical alternatives that still are likely to benefit our patients. Well, I couldn't have said it better myself, which is why we had you on to say it for us. That was absolutely incredible. Take home message, fine arts, heart failure, MRAs, finerenone, across the spectrum of heart failure. An amazing day for clinicians that now we have two medications, SGLT2 inhibitors, finerenone, that have evidence to help our patients. Muthu, thank you so much for being here. It's been a pleasure. Real honor. Thank you so much.